Fluorescence in situ hybridization protocol in human sperm nuclei has been widely incorporated in the field of clinical diagnosis. One of the applications of this methodology is spermatozoa aneuploidy screening as part of the advice on reproduction given to infertile males. The presence of numerical abnormalities is higher in these individuals than in the general population and they often display abnormal seminal parameters. This represents an increased risk of transmitting these anomalies to any offspring. Today, we are going to illustrate the fluorescence in situ hybridization protocol in decondensed sperm nuclei for the analysis of chromosomes 13, 18, 21, X and Y. Once the sample has been collected, it should be left at room temperature for 20 minutes until liquefaction occurs. To begin the protocol, the sample must be transferred to a centrifuge tube. The solutions we are going to use in the first part of the experiment are hypotonic, preheated at 37 degrees C, and methanol acetic acid in the proportion of 3 to 1. These must be freshly prepared. Then the sample is ready to centrifuge at 1000 G's for 5 minutes. Now, gently remove the supernatant and add the hypotonic solution drop by drop until you have a volume of about 10 millilitres. This tube must remain at 37 degrees C for 30 minutes. And then the sample must be centrifuged again. Centrifugation causes the spermatozoa to collect at the bottom of the tube, allowing us to replace the hypotonic solution with the methanol acetic acid. Centrifugation must be repeated to change the methanol acetic acid as many times as is necessary to obtain a white pellet. When this occurs, more methanol acetic acid must be added. The final volume should be adjusted according to the cellular dispersion that you want to obtain in further extensions. The final step is to make the extensions by dropping the fixed sample onto ungreased slides stored in methanol at minus 20 degrees C. It is helpful to delimit the area of the slide containing the sperm extension for prospect relocalizations. This can easily be done using a diamond pencil on the other side of the slide. Once an optimal cellular dispersion has been verified, the slides should be stored at minus 20 degrees C for a minimum of 24 hours before proceeding with the protocol. In this part of the experiment, we are going to use saline sodium citrate solution, ethanol series, dithriophatol and formamide. When the slides have been defrosted, the fixed samples must be washed and dehydrated by submerging them in two consecutive Coplin jars containing 2 times SSC. This will take three minutes for each Coplin. Then, the slides must be submerged for two minutes in each of the ethanol Coplin jars in order of increased concentration.
At this point, in order to continue with the following stages, the slides must be dried out. Given that the DNA in the sperm nucleus is highly compacted, it is necessary to decondense the chromatin before denaturing it. This can be done using a DTT solution at 37 degrees C. This is a product that acts by breaking the disulfur bridges of the proteins that coil the DNA in the spermatozoa nucleus. The incubation time of the slide in DTT must be adjusted according to the reactivity of the semen sample to this product. Usually, this is around 8 minutes, although it can vary from 2 to 15 minutes. After this time, the slides must be transferred immediately to 2 times SSC for 3 minutes. and again for a further three minutes, followed by two minutes in each of the ethanol coplin jars. For the probe hybridizations, it is essential to work with single DNA strands. This requires a denaturation stage before the addition of the probes, involving an incubation period of 5 minutes in a formamide solution at 73 degrees C. To conclude the slide treatment, a final transfer in the ethanol solution is required, submerging the slides for 1 minute per coplin jar. The slides are then ready to be hybridised. In the FISH studies carried out for clinical diagnosis, the most commonly analysed chromosomes include the sex chromosomes and the chromosomes 13, 18 and 21. To analyse these chromosomes, we will use a multicolour DNA probe kit from Vices. This contains one vial with a probe combination for the alpha satellite region of chromosomes X, Y and 18, labelled green, orange and aqua, respectively. And another vial with a combination of probes for chromosomes 13 and 21, labelled green and orange, respectively. The volume of the probe mixture added will vary according to the size of the area you want to hybridise. As a reference, for a 15 by 15 cover slide, a volume of 5 microlitres is sufficient. Both probe mixtures are pre-denatured in a hybridization buffer for easy use, so you can add them directly to the decondensed and denatured slides. There are also other commercial probes available for a wide range of chromosomes and loci that can be used in these experiments. Usually, however, these probes require a pre-denaturing treatment before the addition of the mixture to the target sample. In these situations, it is sufficient to follow the manufacturer's instructions. The targeted region must be covered with a cover slide and sealed with rubber cement. Then, the slides are ready to be placed into the hybridisation chamber pre-warmed to 37 degrees C and incubated at that temperature for 6 to 24 hours. In the final part of the protocol, we are going to use these two wash solutions made up of different concentrations of saline sodium citrate solution and the detergent NP40. After the incubation time, the slides can be removed from the hybridization chamber to eliminate the rubber cement. Then, carefully take off the cover slide as shown. The slides are submerged for two minutes in the first wash solution pre-warmed to 73 degrees C.
Then, they are transferred to the second wash solution at room temperature for a further minute. These two washes will help us eliminate any unspecific hybridization signals. After these two washes, we have to wait for the slides to dry out to conclude the last step of the protocol. At this point, a counter-staining product is added to facilitate the visualisation of the nucleus of the cells. One of the most common products used for this purpose is DAPI. The volume added must also be adjusted to the size of the hybridised area. As a reference, for an 18 by 18 cover slide, a volume of 8 microliters of DAPI is sufficient. The cover slide can be sealed with nail varnish. And now the preparations are ready to be visualised. Otherwise, they can be stored at minus 20 degrees C until their prospect analysis. The microscope that we are going to use for the visualisation is an Olympus BX60 epifluorescent equipped with a triple band filter for DAPI, Texas Red, FITC and single band filters for Aqua, FITC and Texas Red. Through the triple band filter, the preparation hybridised with X, Y and 18 displays signals for these three chromosomes. Using the single band filter for aqua, we can only visualise fluorescent signals for chromosome 18. We should expect one of these signals in every normal spermatozoa. However, when using the single band filter for FITC, only some spermatozoa show a fluorescent green signal corresponding to the X chromosome. The spermatozoa that lack the green signal should display a red signal for the Y chromosome, which could be specifically visualised through the filter for Texas Red. Visualising the 1321 hybridisation through the triple band filter, we can distinguish signals for these two chromosomes. The green signal corresponds to chromosome 13 and can be specifically visualised using the single band filter for FITC. The single band filter for Texas Red allows us to specifically visualise the signals for chromosome 21. All normal spermatozoa should display one signal for each one of these two probes. So, to sum up, here are the main stages of the protocol again. The fixation process should be accurately carried out to obtain good quality extensions, with a drop-by-drop -drop addition of the methanol acetic acid to avoid the formation of sperm aggregates. In the decondensation process, the incubation time in DTT solution must be adjusted according to the reactivity of the semen sample to this product. Excessive exposure of the spermatozoa to DTT would result in dispersed signals at the end of the protocol, whereas insufficient exposure would result in zero probe hybridizations and a lack of some signals. Whereas the denaturation of the sperm sample is mandatory, the probe denaturations must be adapted to the manufacturer's indications. It is important to maintain strict control over the time and temperature of the two post-hybridisation washes. A higher temperature or an excessive wash time can result in the elimination of some signals, whereas the opposite would not eliminate unspecific signals. 
Finally, the use of an epifluorescent microscope equipped with adequate specific filters is essential for good visualisation and signal interpretation. And that's it. Thank you for watching and good luck with your experiments.